you feel like you're stuck or find yourself attracting the same type of relationships and negative experiences or just not manifesting what you want in life, welcome to Heal Your Story. I'm your host, Heidi Dallaire. Here we discuss all things life, love, relationships, the relationship with yourself, and the stories we tell about ourselves and others. I help people get out of their busy heads and get back in touch with their heart space to learn self-love and help heal their story. I'm a heart space and relational coach, a holistic health practitioner, and author at HeidiDelaire.com and LoveWideOpen.com. Let's go hold some heart space together. Hello, all. For those of you who are first-time watchers or listeners, I am Heidi Delaire, the creator of Love Wide Open, also a holistic health practitioner, the host of Heal Your Story podcast, and an uh, emotional health and heart space coach helping empaths and sensitives navigate the world just a little bit easier. So today I have something very exciting. I have Gabrielle Bernstein here, who is a number one New York Times bestselling author, also motivational guide and speaker, and someone who is right now just published back in February their ninth book, Happy Days, which I have had the pleasure of reading. And I'm going to read the tagline because I don't want to mess it up. We've got Happy Days, which is the guided path from trauma to profound freedom and inner peace. Welcome, Gabby, to the Love Wide Open and Heal Your Story family. You can welcome baby Lily, too. We have a little baby kitten in the studio today. Oh, sweet little baby. And a bengal. A bengal. And she's my second one. My big one, my big or kitten is out there and she's very mad at mommy right now. <laughs> yes. Real attachment wound right now. <laughs> but we're we're gonna we're working it out. We're doing all the protocols of keeping them separate until till it's time. <laughs> yeah. Cat introductions are um hard intro yeah, hard. Hard, hard, hard. hard yeah, for them, it's, a, hard it's for an us. art. It's an art. Yeah, they're doing good. They're doing good. Well, awesome. Awesome on your new kitten. Congrats. Thank you. So I want to kind of dive right in because, you know, I know you from the manifesting world. Um, and that's how I have uh, come in contact with you and how most people kind of know you. So this book for you, Happy Days, is a little bit different. But also, I think sort of right in line that it is sort of part of the whole manifestation of what was next for you. So I'd like to ask, you know, what was it that may have surprised you about Happy Days or something that, you know, as you were writing Happy Days kind of surprised you? Well, I actually really appreciate what you just said about how this may be my, my greatest manifestation book, right? I think that was probably the biggest surprise, which was that while this is a book about trauma, it actually is my most spiritual book. It has given me a greater sense of presence, a greater sense of inner peace to write it, but first to live it in order to write it. And that presence and inner peace and joy is what makes us a magnet, is what attunes us with what I call your super attractor power. So the practices in this book, while they may seem therapeutic or s spiritual methods, they're actually profound manifesting methods because the more we become centered and at ease within our system, the easier it is for us to attract what it is that we desire into our life. All right. So with the whole manifesting and now this is your greatest spiritual book for those people who are trying so hard to manifest in life. And, you know, they've read every self-help book on, on the shelves. Um, I used to be one of those too, like mm -hmm. consuming, consuming, consuming all of the self-help things, you know, reading about manifesting, trying, trying, trying so hard, but nothing, nothing clicked, nothing, nothing fell into place. For those people who are on that path and who are like, well, why should I keep trying or, or what's the secret 
you know, under here, um, because you've just talked about healing and manifesting, which comes first? Is it chicken or egg or is it all part of a process? I would say first and foremost, stop trying and start healing. We have a lot of blocks to our manifesting power, the presence of our super attractor power, as I call it. And those blocks are not taking it away from us. They're just a wall built up against that presence of that power. And those blocks really come in the form of unresolved wounds, belief systems that are fear-based, belief systems about ourselves that are fear-based, negative, afraid, mad, rageful. When we begin the journey of undoing those false belief systems about ourselves, we restore our connection to our highest self, the self with a capital S, the magnetic part of who we are that can attract more of its likeness. We're always manifesting what we're a yes for. So if we're a yes for chaos, and if we're a yes for fear, and if we're a yes for drama, then that's what we're going to get back. Whereas if we're a yes for healing, we're a yes for ease, we're a yes for grace, we're a yes for inspiration, our life will be really different. I I can understand how people can get, get caught up in 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 the the manifesting of chaos. Totally. Um I I did I I had that going on at one point in my life. Um, and attracting that. But what I didn't realize then until a, a little bit more of a painful road was that it was a deep, a deep wound, um, a self-worth um, wound. And until, you know, peeling that onion a little bit and realizing that, did that chaos stop? So, you know, I, I, I'd like to ask, like, what's your advice for those who are projecting like the blame out there onto onto others for their own stuff to be able to shed light to get deep enough to be like okay actually i'm the greatest denominator here i think that's the first thing you have to accept that you are the greatest denominator because when we point the finger at others that's a sure sign that we need to stop and just take a gentle reflection back towards ourselves Whenever we're blaming or shaming others, it's a usually a deflection of our own inner condition. We put out what we don't want to recognize within. So yeah. just accepting that the judgments that we have are guidance to recognize the unresolved wounds that we need to heal. Mm -hmm. First step, big step. Yeah, big step. <clears throat> And when that is so scary to even look at for someone, then what's their second step? This is going to sound like a shameless plug, but it's not. Pick up Happy Days. I say this or, or any other book that resonates with you about the undoing of your behavioral experiences and pa patterns and practices and the undoing of trauma, because we all have trauma, big T, small T, big T, like sexual abuse or violence or growing up with an alcoholic parent, and small t trauma, being told, told you're stupid or bullied. We have these experiences in life that create these belief systems that hold us back from that, that true power and they keep us stuck in our behavioral patterns that are really destructive and extreme. A, a great first step, I mean, a first step could be getting a therapist. A first step could be listening to more of your work. A first step could be all of the things that, that, uh, that are door openers to more. And Really, the step, really, the first, first step is having the willingness, the willingness to see things through that lens of love, the willingness to change, the willingness to do whatever it takes to grow and heal. And then the next step would be, you know, seek out the support or welcome the support or pay attention to the guided support that comes to you, the book, the podcast, the therapist, the teacher, whatever form that comes. Because when we say yes to heal, we will be flooded with opportunities for growth. We just have to pay attention to what we receive and show yeah. up for it. And show up for it, right? Because um, so many times what we need to heal shows up and we need to show up, but we push, we push it away. Yes. I always say that it will keep showing up until we show up for it. So mm -hmm. If we don't show up for what's up, it's going to just keep showing up. 
That's right. And when, and, and that's why the patterns in our life are such beautiful guidance to look more closely at the wounds because when you have a pattern that keeps showing up in just different men or different women or different bosses or, but it's the same pattern that keeps happening, the same result over and over, you have to recognize that that has nothing to do with the people outside of you. It has to do with what you believe inside. Yeah. You know, at the, in the very first part of your book, you, you talk about how coming upon like just the small prayer, just putting out there you know, there has to be a better way yeah. than what's happening right now. Can you just like talk a little bit more about that? Mm-hmm, definitely. I mean, a lot of my healing journey began in my early recovery through sobriety when I was 25. What got me sober was that prayer. There has to be a better way. <laughs> just hitting my knees like, I need a miracle. There has got to be a better way. That is a, a prayer that opens invisible doors. That's a prayer that says, I'm willing to pay attention to something beyond my logic and reason, I'm willing to receive guidance. And so that really is, like we said, the first step, the willingness. Mm-hmm. When you say there has to be a better way, you're willing to do things differently. Yeah. It's a, it's almost, it's a surrender to yourself. Like yes. Exactly. You're, yeah. You're just like tearing down the walls finally for yourself and allowing the process to, to start. Yes. And that's, that can be terrifying. Um, and so much stuff can come up. Um, and I, I know you speak greatly about compassion and self-compassion. And could you expand a little bit more on that too, in this process? In the book, I write about internal family systems therapy, mm-hmm. otherwise known as IFS or parts work. The premise being that we have all these different parts of who we are and we have these extreme parts that are addicted and rageful and overreactive. And then we have these exiled parts that are children that were traumatized that we want to lock up. But while we have these extreme parts, we also have what is known as self and self with a capital S is the calm, compassionate, courageous, creative, connected part of who we are. And the compassion, I think, is typically the strongest or the first responder from self-energy. Most of the time when we're trying to tap into self, it's often, well, in my experience, I don't know if this is necessarily true, but often for me, the compassion is the first responder. And it's, it's the part of us that has the ability to see ourselves through the lens of compassion. And as a result of having compassion for all of the parts of who we are, we can in turn extend that compassion to the people in our lives that we care for and anyone truly and all of the parts of who they are. So as you start to extend compassion to the part of you that's addicted or the part of you that's, that's, that's overreactive, what you do is you really dissolve the judgment that you have towards your different parts. And the same goes for seeing that compassion in others. So if I can see somebody I work with who's super activated and being a real annoyance and defensive, but then I can say, oh, that's their compassion. That's, I have compassion for that defensive part of them. They're really, really struggling right now. All the drama disappears. It all just dissolves. Yeah. So the, the whole self compassion piece and what you just said of, you know, looking at someone else brings me to, um, you know, a piece in judgment detox where you're, you're looking at, you're looking at someone in their innocence. Mm. And when you, when you tend to look at someone in your innocence, all of that judgment falls away. Yes. Um, and the same thing with yourself, because I think, um, and as you talk about in your book, shame plays a huge role in what keeps us stuck and unhappy and it's deep it it's i find shame that the hardest of any of the self-love and self-compassion things to really kind of get over yeah you know so what are some of the techniques that you really have used for yourself and would recommend for others to get to that deep 
you know, stuff and that shame to lighten up on yourself. Yeah. Well, shame is why we judge. So it's interesting that you wove in the judgment detox work with shame and how it relates to happy days, because there are many different forms of shame responses. And I believe that touching into shame, it's valuable to first understand how we respond to it. We respond to shame in very protective ways. So we will judge, you know, attack others, attack the other, because we can't face that shame that we feel within. So we have to put it somewhere else. And so we put it onto somebody else. We also have the other opposite, which is to attack the self, right? So there's so much shame. So you attack yourself. Maybe you attack yourself with thoughts or food or addictive behaviors. Then there's denial, right? Oh, that didn't happen. Or so-and-so had it so much worse than I did. And, you know, just really minimizing our experiences. That's a big one. And so when we start to understand these different responses to shame, we can start to recognize, oh, okay, I'm doing that because there's something deeper underneath. And just like any impermissible feeling, we have to not try to get rid of it. We need to befriend it. And to befriend it, we can ask it some questions, get curious about it. Hey, shame, you know, or maybe I don't even know that it's shame yet. Hey, that uncomfortable feeling. What do I know about you? What do you, what do I know about you? What do you need to to tell me right now? Curiosity is a really beautiful way to approach impermissible feelings. We can become compassionate towards the shame. Just noticing, oh my gosh, that's, that's my shame that's, that's acting in that way. And oh, that's a young part of me. And the more I know about it, the more compassion I have for it. So really connecting to that shame in a way that is open-hearted and compassionate and courageous is just a beautiful way to befriend it rather than try to push it away. And then that goes into like, um, you know, I'm also a body worker and energy healer and Ayurveda practitioner. So I understand how emotions get trapped in the body. Hmm. And I got into that work because I, at one point, started having all of these autoimmune yeah. uh, things popping up and not understanding that it was undigested emotions, right? Like when we, when we don't digest food correctly or whatever, it can cause us gut issues or weight gain or, or the opposite of anorexia, you know, bulimia. Same thing with emotions, that if we tamp them down and ignore them, and cannot digest them. They get, they get stuck. They get stuck in the body. They get stuck in the tissues. And, you know, you've talked about this in the book. Like the, the, the one piece that really stands out for me is when, um, your husband asked you if you wanted to race to the house hmm. and your body could not respond. Yeah. Couldn't run to that. Um, it was really weird you know, can, and frightening. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When all of a sudden something just, doesn't work even your your mind is like no i know how to do this or something's very wrong and not being able to put um you know tap it to understand that it's our emotions that have gone so long without being healed that it's causing other things going on in our body and this really is happy days this is you know your journey um And so if you could talk to the audience just a little bit about like your experience, if they haven't read the book yet of, you know, the things that were starting to pop up for you physically. Yeah. TMJ, which I still, I still am working through extreme gastrointestinal issues, which are completely cured now. And I don't even want to say cured, gone, disappeared gone as a result of healing my nervous system the inability to run. (laughs) But when I say I can't run, like I literally, my legs were like lead. And it was, I was frozen. I was frozen. And it was when I was really going through processing some really deep, heavy stuff. And for me, when I worked through it in EMDR therapy, I was able to recognize that I was frozen in a memory and I had to reprocess that memory with the support of this therapist and the process of EMDR which I write about in the book, to undo 
the, to, to thaw out that frozen state. Now the physical, so the physical symptoms that I'm still working through now, and this is probably, you know, good for me to talk to you about, uh, as we talk, I've got a lot of, um, piriformis and iliacus, um, pain, tightness, just, just, uh, like a wiry band or a, even yeah. actually, I would even describe it even more severe. Like there's a iron, an iron hip kind of, and it needs to be drilled through. That's the visuals that come to me through my IFS. My jaw is the same. It's like, I have this image of like this iron jaw that needs a dr like a very tiny drill to just drill through it. And then when it gets all the way through, there's going to be this explosion of energy that's going to come out of it. Yeah. And so I actually have to pay attention to, so I'm very willing to heal this somatically. And I've been working on it for a long time. And I know how to do it because I write about it in the book because I've done it with the, with the gastro issues. Yep. And now it's really about using somatic experiencing, using IFS, but also body work. And so the other day I'm with a friend and they're telling me about this body worker that they see who does this Rolfing, Rolfing type of work. Yeah. But all, of course, for moving out stored trauma. And when you receive guidance and you get any kind of hit of inspiration, you have to just become curious about that and hopefully say yes to it because it's going to lead you to the next right practitioner, book, healer, whatever it might be. And so immediately I reached out to the woman and I've got my session in July and I just intuitively know that this is the next phase of release and that I do need support in it, because of that vision of the drill, like I almost need that my work, my mental work and breath work and the support of someone tuned in to release that stored trauma. That's so, I feel it like a hot wire underneath yeah. an iron, iron jaw, iron right. hip, but the live wire yeah, is so shaking. Yeah. So if you think about it more of like, um, think about how long it took you to get to that point, mm. you also have to unwind mm -hmm. and that there's, there's, there's certain things that, you know, they wound together mm. and one will unwind first and one will unwind after that. So as you've healed your gut, now the rest of the body can say, Oh, now I can get the things I need. That's right. And I couldn't even notice the physical pain when the gut was the only focus, right? Right. But but from the perspective that I write about in the body based work of this of Happy Days, is all about the the John Sarno work of, of that it's psychosomatic and that these physical symptoms are just hiding and and s disguising the impermissible rage, impermissible fear, impermissible trauma. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's a big one because, you know, you are uber honest about, you know, your healing process and where you've been through recovery and to now, and to now just sitting here still and saying, you know, there's still more. Yeah, yeah. I think we are, we are always healing. There's always something, you know, um, I, I hope can... to always be healing because it means I'm growing and it means I'm, mm -hmm. I also, you and I, I believe anyone that's in the healing arts in any form has made a commitment in this lifetime to be in the service of others through the service of ourselves. So not that I don't, the more I recover, the more, the more I can teach, the more I can serve, the more I can show yeah. up. But the, each encounter I experience in my life, and I do hope that they, be, that they have, and they continue to be less and less extreme, but I think these moments are these parts of me that are healing because they give me great opportunity to learn more so I can teach better and teach more. That's right. With, without these experiences, um, we can't teach others or, or have the, I think, um, felt sense, the felt yeah. sense of what it means to be in that other, on the other side of something. That's right. Because now people can look at you and say, Oh, or read your book and be like me too. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, I understand. I've mm -hmm. had, mm -hmm. I've had this thing or I I'm, I'm now ready. I've been I'm, there. Yeah. I'm ready. And I, and I truly believe, um, you talk about this a lot 
in in all of your work of when we are we are guided all of the time right person you know book falls in in you you hear somebody mention uh, an author you've never heard of or a speaker and pay attention to that greatly i was working with a client the other day and they mentioned someone i'm like i've never heard of them and I'm mm-hmm. like, but it sounds a lot like so and so and they're like what's their name again right so it's this it's this curiosity in learning more about what's out there so that we can heal ourselves even better yes you know what do you do to get quiet enough so that you actually listen to yourself i think this is what people need to hear is like how do they hear themselves but the message is coming i practice ifs so I kind of have a fast track of just tuning into the parts of me that are activated and connecting with them. And so if I notice my jaw is just totally clenched, I'll just start to notice more about it. So I'll notice what it feels like. Is there a color? Like I said, it's iron jaw. I'll start to get some visual imagery, notice the sensation physically. And then I'll ask myself, well, what do I know about it? And I know it's holding on really tightly. It's really protective. I know that it's been with me for a long ass time. I know that it's really scared and angry and rageful and wants to like bite. And I then ask myself, what, do, what does that jaw need? And what does it need? It needs, it needs relief. It needs to scream. It needs to move. It needs to, uh, fight back, curse. It needs a lot right yeah. now. <laughs> and then and then doing something in some way, first of all, just hearing it and giving voice to it is such a powerful practice. And then giving it what it needs, right? So I'm going to go after this conversation and go stretch my hips because my hips will open my jaw. And you know, just just giving it what it needs. I might just go write about some things that are really bothering me or whatever it is. And so That's how I get to that voice of wisdom. Of course, I also do through my meditation and in my meditation, I listen to binaural music, which opens up that, that it's EMDR music, which opens up our window of tolerance to process things. And so I listen to that music while meditating and I always come out of my meditation, just more, more self energized, more connected to self. I'm, I'm sure many people reach out to you as they do. I have, you know, right now we're all, we're all experiencing a, a um, world trauma together, you know, um, and I think a lot of people feel guilty that they don't, they don't know how to help right now with everything that's going on in the world or really don't even know how to help themselves. Mm-hmm. So if you were going to give like a, a, a one last takeaway of right now, something that people can do for themselves Mm -hmm. um, that actually also does help the world, whether it feels that way or not. Mm. I think that would be super helpful. Become more curious about yourself. Start to check in more. Ask yourself some questions. Notice your sensations. Just be curious. Because the more curious you are, the more you open up your awareness of possibilities possibilities of how you can heal, possibilities of what needs to heal. And the, when we serve ourselves, that's how we serve the world. When we serve our soul, when we serve our nervous system, our energy system, we can show up better. At this time I've launched this book, I have a podcast now. I've been on 85 hours of podcasts the last few months. And my readers are writing to me saying, your energy is so different and more grounded and soothing. And of course, I'm, I'm I'm a different person. I've been through so much. And by no means would I judge my old energy. My old energy had a purpose too. Yeah. But I can see very clearly how my devotional commitment to heal has helped me be a more impactful healer. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Awesome way to end. For those of you who are out there who are feeling the need to heal and either stuck. Gabby's book, Happy Days, has some incredible resources in it, along with her own uh, guidance. 
So you can learn about EMDR, which I have had, uh, which is incredible and can mm-hmm. start you on a very fast track of healing. Uh, IFS, you know, there's the, every, and then all of your own um, techniques with, you know, EFT and meditation and, and guided meditations are wonderful. So if people who do not know you yet wanted to find you, where could they find you? Because they can get your book wherever books are sold. They can go to DearGabby.com. You can listen to my podcast, Dear Gabby. is a nice place to start just to get to know the work. And uh, yeah, or, or be, read any of my books. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. Thank, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for this. I'm this so really happy beautiful. to have spent a little bit of time with you. Yeah, you're, you're so lovely. Clearly have done all, a lot of your own work um, <laughs> because you're a very soothing presence too. So thank you so much, Heidi. I look forward to being friends with you. All right, Gabby, thanks so much. Have fun with the kitties. Thank you. (laughs) All right, bye-bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of Heal Your Story. Please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find me, my coaching services, my book, or book a Heal Your Story strategy session at HeidiDelaire.com. For other self-development articles, go to LoveWideOpen.com. And you can also follow me at Heidi Dallaire or Love Wide Open on all social media channels. Thanks so much. Sending lots of love.